Every new episode of SAO Alicization War of Underworld Part 2, you'd think it's going to get better, but no, no, it, it does not get better. Every single episode, it gets worse for the Human Empire, Wrath, the good guys, and pretty much everyone from uh, the original SAO. Everything just continues to go downhill, and it's an endless spiral of shit that just keeps getting worse and worse for them. And this episode proves that very well. But without further ado, let's just dive right on into episode 16 of War of Underworld. Now, this episode starts back in the real world with the, the glasses guy trying to fix Kirito's STL and the dude that was helping him. But the guy that was helping him pulled out a gun and it turns out that he was a traitor and that he was leaking information to the Americans about the whole Alicization project. And then it's revealed that this guy used to work for Suko. You know, the mid-twenties guy who tried to marry Asuna when she was asleep in like 17. And you know, held her captive in ALO and, and you know, he just tried to casually murder Kirito. Yeah, that, that douchebag. Well, this guy wants to continue Sugo's legacy, which means, like, getting a good job over in America. And it turns out this guy is just a complete nut. And he then ends up shooting the glasses guy in the shoulder. But then, uh, it switches back to the underworld with Sinon encountering the guy who used the Vector account. And this guy's name, instead of Vector now, it's Subtilizer. Or this is what the account's name is. And Sinon had previously fought him in GGO. But to me, it seems that this account is a lot stronger than the God Vector account. Because he has like this darkness or this dark aura around him that seems to make him stronger. And like heal or regenerate any damage that he takes. Oh, and he also basically almost sexually assaults fucking Sinon, dude. This girl's like 17, 18, barely, and this dude's probably in like his 30s. And he wants to eat her soul. And Sinon can basically barely do nothing about it, and as soon as she was about to get her soul eaten, so I'm guessing that's what was gonna happen, uh, something that Kirito gave her saved her. And then it starts this pretty dope fight between Xenon and Subtilizer, with Xenon taking out her main gun, Hecate from GGO, and she starts shooting at Subtilizer, who pretty much blocks the attacks and bullets with pretty much ease. But then it cuts to Asuna and the rest of the Human Empire, along with all the other players from ALO that are helping them fight against the people that are constantly logging in to fight against uh, the underworld basically and the, they've pretty much been tricked by the, the bastard who was a part of Laughing Coffin and it is just a shit show for Asuna and the rest of the gang like they are getting shit on bro like most of them are at their limit and are about to die and they can't really go on anymore but one of them on Asuna's side tries to explain that they're the good guys and they're not hackers and that they're legitimate players and that all of the people who are logging in as like the knights that are red and she tries to explain that they've all been deceived but then the bastard uh, who was a part of Laughing Coffin chimes in and says that mm, she's lying to them and that they're the good guys basically and they end up believing him instead of her but a couple of the red knights that's what i'm going to call them believed her and had just taken their helmets off and well they believed her and they noticed that it seemed off like just everything seemed off to them and now they knew the truth but basically everyone else that was a red knight didn't really believe them anymore and they started to attack the human empire again it then switched over to the leader of the pugilists that's what i think they're called and the female integrity knight that had like mm, uh, 
pretty much obsession with slicing and cutting down things. Well, they're surrounded and it looks like they're about to die. And they seem content with their deaths as it looks like they've kind of fallen in love uh, while in the midst of battle, which I can't lie, this is pretty dope. But when everything looks down, uh, someone comes to save them. And that someone is Leafa with a uh, little pillin and like the rest of the orcs. Like basically the orcs come in with Lil Pillin and they start shitting on the Red Knights. And that's when Leafa comes in and starts basically slaughtering a bunch of the Red Knights in an attempt to save the Pugilists and the Female Integrity Knight. And after this it switches back to the real world uh, in basically the main control room for the good guys with the uh, the secret agent who sent Kirito into the underworld, and uh, a female scientist. And while they're looking at the screen, they notice this weird code called Code 871, which is also the name of this episode. And they don't really recognize this code, and, and I think this code is so that the inhabitants of the underworld remains obedient. And when people break this code, in the underworld, the inhabitants, their right eye basically explodes. And those who don't have a right eye anymore and broke free from this code are the pugilist leader, Lil Pillin, the leader of the orcs, and Yu-Gi-Oh. -Oh. Who knows, they might explain this code uh, further in the next episode. But after this, it switches back the glasses guy trying to save Kirito's STL and Sugo's lackey, basically. And it turns out that this guy was basically serving Admin, who he calls Abby, and I think this guy sort of had like this deranged love for her, as he wanted to be her number one servant. But Kirito, you know, he basically killed her, and for that, he wants Kirito to die. And it turns out that this guy, this motherfucker right here, is the one who corrupted the underworld. Just allowing this entire shit show to happen, dude. So you can basically thank this fucker for allowing Berkuli to die. Indirectly, of course, cause bro, Berkuli, he was, he was the coolest fucking character, bro. His powers were hella dope. That fight between him and Vector, probably one of the best in all of SAO. But then this deranged douchebag says that he needs to kill one last person, meaning Glasses Guy. But then it cuts back to the underworld, with Asuna and the rest of the human empire, and they are just continuing to get their asses handed to them, bro. Like, we got Klein with a bad injury to his arm, we got Aegil basically on the verge of death, and the bastard who used to be a laughing coffin member, told Asuna to surrender and he wouldn't kill the others. And Asuna ends up surrendering so basically the human empire could live and they basically lose, I guess. After they surrendered, Asuna wonders if he wants revenge for Laughing Coffin or something, but that he, he just laughs at that and he tells Asuna that he's the one who leaked information about Laughing Coffin's base to the assault team. And that's how the assault team ended up wiping out Laughing Coffin. And basically he's the reason for Kirito becoming a murderer and killing two of Laughing Coffin's members. And I was just like, oh shit dude. And it's also revealed that during the fight, uh, that if this guy couldn't keep himself from laughing, he would have been revealed. But Asuna gets mad at him and starts yelling at him saying, Do you know what Kirito went through because of this? But uh, this guy's response to Asuna is basically that Kirito is a killer, and if he didn't feel bad uh, about killing them, then he would have been repulsed by even playing another VR game. But since he played more VR games, he didn't really care about killing him. That's what I'm basically getting from how he implied what he said. And then he asks Asuna if Kirito is in the underworld. And just kind of by the look on her face, he says to her, he is, isn't he? 
and Kirito ends up getting wheeled out onto the battlefield in front of just this evil laughing coffin motherfucker. And then, just Kirito, he's still, like, in this state of, you know, not really being able to do anything. So you're just, like, left wondering, Kirito, you gotta get up or else you're probably gonna die. Like, this is the point where Kirito needs to snap out of it and, like, come on to the fight, dude. Like, to jump into the battle, to like, save everyone in this war. So basically, I'm hoping that Kirito sort of snaps out of it, and his STL gets fixed, maybe on its own, I don't know, and that he's able to fight against this bastard and kill him, and in the process, save everyone and get reunited with all his friends. So basically, that's what I'm hoping for in the next episode, because, like, they're kind of dragging it out. I mean, Kirito, he has to, like, snap out of it at some point, right? And this seems like the perfect opportunity to do that. And yeah, that was basically where the episode ended off. And just leaving you on another cliffhanger wanted more. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Also go subscribe to my other channels. The links will be down in the description below. Also go follow me on Twitter and Instagram. The links will be down in the description as well. And yeah, I will catch you all in the next one. Peace.